I want you to mentally pick a card as I riffle through. Look at a card as it goes by and remember it in your mind. Don't pick this card. That's too obvious. So look close. Did you get one? I know that was too fast. I'll do it again a lot slower. And I want to bring your attention to my prediction card right here. So let's do it again and look close. And remember, the closer you look, the less you'll see. So pick a card and remember it. Did you get one? Do you think my prediction card matches your card? In this video, you're going to learn how to make double back cards, double face cards, half and half cards, slant half and half cards, and the Hofsenzer's card. This allows you to take a light, shine it through, and it'll show one card, but when you drop it down, it's another card. I made this. First thing you need to know how to do is to split a card. I'm going to show you the best technique to do that. It's very quick. A playing card is made up of three layers. The thin face, the thin back, and a thicker middle. To split these apart, you have to use brand new cards. So if you're planning on making your own gaff cards, I recommend buying a double pack of standard bicycle playing cards with a red deck and a blue deck. You'll have plenty of cards to make all kinds of gaff cards. I'm also going to show you the trick in the beginning, the mental force. I learned that in the 70s from some old dude. They had this magic wagon in the middle of the mall. I call him an old dude because I was like 12 years old. And I would just spend hours walking around that wagon looking at all the tricks. And remember back then there were no cell phones. There wasn't any online ordering. You had to find a magic shop if you wanted to buy some magic. Anyway, this old guy bought a deck of cards just to show me that trick and another trick. And he showed me how to do it at the end. It's the same trick most recently. If you've seen the movie Now You See Me, it's right in the beginning of the movie. Now they're calling it the Now You See Me trick, and it's not. I mean, this guy showed this thing to me back in the 70s. Also, there's a couple tutorials of the Now You See Me magic trick where they teach the wrong way to do it. So I'm going to show you that. Along with another trick I'll show you at the end that dates back from the 1940s that you can use gaff cards that you're going to make. And yes, gaff cards have been around that long. To split a card, you need a brand new card and a hard surface like this. This is a piece of shelving material and I've screwed on this little piece of aluminum. I'll explain the reason for that, but it allows you to square things up. To split this, you have to condition it first. If you don't condition it, it won't split and it'll rip. So you grab it from corner to corner and you're going to start a wave motion like this. And you go from corner to corner and you just keep bending it. Don't bend it so much where it puts a crease, but just keep working it. It'll start getting softer and softer. You have to do this for a couple minutes, just like this, and you're conditioning the card so it will now separate. Now you want to pick a non-index corner. An index corner is where the numbers or the letters. These are non-index corners. You want to choose a non-index corner. And you have your hard surface right here. You're going to just take the card as square as you can. And you're going to just keep hitting it fairly hard on that corner. You're going to start teasing this corner back and forth. These cards will take quite a bit of punishment as long as you don't crease them. After you've teased it a little bit, you can give it another smack on the hard surface. 
and it'll start separating. And at this point, once you see it start separating, you're going to choose whether you want to peel the face off or whether you want to peel the back off. In this case, I'm going to peel the face. So I'm going to start teasing that piece of paper down and pulling back the back and the middle part, which will stay together. And I'm going to tease and, and split that face off of this card. Now, you can use your razor knife. You're going to need one of these for doing some slicing, but for this, use the back of the razor knife, not the sharp part or the point. Just use the square back part. And you can get in there and start separating that front piece just a little bit. If you can get a grab of it and just pull it back just a little bit, you can see it's starting to come. And start rolling back the back piece as you're pulling this piece. And it starts doing one of these numbers. Now get your finger in there and just pull it back a little bit. You see, it's starting to come off. Get it to just about to there. Roll this back. This is a thicker piece. This is a thinner piece. Get it? This is why you need the hard surface. The thin side always goes down. The thicker side stays on the top. As you peel this back, you want to put your index finger right behind there. So as you, you're, you're rolling it, you don't want to crease any of these because you can use both sides. So you want to start rolling this back. Place this on the table. Get your finger in on that thin piece. Now it's kind of like opening an envelope. Put your index finger on the thin part and push down. And as you push down and start rolling back with this one, you're going to be rolling your finger in. And start rolling back as you squeeze your finger inside, holding that thin part down. Remember, go corner to corner. When it starts widening out, get two fingers in there. Don't crease this part. Use your fingers to roll. We, we'll straighten that out later. Just don't put a crease in it. Get three fingers in there. Keep going from corner to corner. When you get to the end, start going down to two fingers, holding your finger here, trying to keep them down, get down to that last, just like that, and there it is. We're going to use this, the straight, the corner, the sharp part of this table, and we're going to lightly try to straighten this out as best as possible. Never do it on the face or the back, always do it on the ripped side. We're just going to do the corner like this, pull it just a little bit, just to get it flattened out as best as you can. Same thing with this one. This is not too bad. A little bit right there. Now, if you split it correctly, you can use both of these pieces. This is the thin face, can be put on another card. and. This is the thin back with the middle. You could, for instance, take a blue back and put it right there and make a double back. Now these are not ready to use yet. We have to flatten them out even more. I use these plexiglass plates and line them up and put them in there. And use this clamp right in the middle and leave that overnight. By tomorrow they'll be flat as a pancake. Now to glue your pieces together, you're going to need to use Elmer's No Wrinkle Rubber Cement. Now this is an old bottle. I opened it up 
It was too thick, so I went and bought a brand new bottle. Walmart, $3.97. And follow the warnings. No smoking. Even the fumes are flammable. May cause skin irritation, allergic reactions. I'm going to make a double back card with a red back and a blue back. So you need a thin blue back or red back. And the opposite is the thin part and the middle part. We're gonna glue this right there. Now I'm gonna show you a technique that makes this super easy. Get a small stack of printing paper. You can glue on top of this, get your two pieces and lay them here. You're gonna put glue on both sides. Put your fingers right here and start right in the middle and start spreading it towards the edges. You wanna make sure you get it fully covered and not too thick. You don't wanna have a bunch of excess. Turn it around, get your finger right here and continue on covering every part of the back of the card. Once it's fully covered, give it a few strokes to smooth it out and as thin as possible. And don't worry about it drying on you. You actually, you want it a little dry. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Hold it right here and start in the middle and start spreading towards the ends. Making sure every part is covered. Once it's fully covered, go ahead and do your strokes like this for the final thing and set it aside. Close your glue to keep the fumes away. Go ahead and take your piece of paper that has excess glue on it and get rid of it. Now without the technique I'm going to show you, it would be almost impossible to put these together and have them perfectly aligned. That's why this little piece comes in handy. You can line these and square these cards up on this piece right here. And you want to slide them together to where those edges touch each other. Make sure it's perfectly square, hold it in place, run your finger along like that. Now they've stuck together. All you have to do is come over here and flop it over. Just press gently and they should be perfectly aligned. Don't press all the way yet. Get your stack of paper again. Place your card on top of it. You're gonna get a roller. You're gonna do this four times. The first time you're gonna go in the middle and press lightly. Go forward and then back lightly. Turn it over, do the same thing. Put it in the middle, go lightly, forward and then back. Now the third time, turn it over again. This time you're gonna press as hard as you can. Press down, go forward, and then back. Do that a couple times to where it actually bows the card. Turn it over again. This is the final time. Put it in the middle. Press as hard as you can. Forward and back. Now take your finger along the edges. You're going to feel some of the glue. It's sort of sticky. And do this over your paper. You're just going to take your finger and go back and forth like this. You'll feel the glue coming off. And do that on all four of the edges. You'll see little pieces falling down here. Check your corners. Make sure they feel nice and smooth all the way around. Now at this point, these cards are not coming apart. They are permanently bonded. However, they're not ready yet. They have to cure. So how do you cure them? Place it 
in between two plexiglass pieces and clamp it down and leave it overnight. By tomorrow, you'll have a double back card ready to use. This is how you make half and half cards. You can make half and half like this or half and half on an angle. Make a half and half back card with a blue and a red or a face card and a back card. Just use your imagination. You can come up with whatever you want. You'll need something to cut on. This is a self-sealing cutting board. They sell this in Office Depot. It comes with an X-Acto knife and five extra blades. Works perfect. I'm gonna make a half and half card where this side is a jack of spades and the other side is a three of diamonds. So I have a regular card I've done nothing to. And this is the thin face of the three of diamonds. I'm gonna place the three on top of the jack and line it up to where it's perfectly aligned and I'm gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna take a metal straight edge, place it right in the middle and hold it down. Double check that all everything is aligned. Take your razor knife, you're gonna slice through like this. Now you wanna slice through this piece and only through the thin face of your other card. Takes a few times to get the right pressure. You don't wanna slice all the way through that bottom card. You just wanna go through the top face layer. And that, that'll, you can practice on some other cards to just get that, you'll find that right pressure. Just like that. I've barely gone through and you can see the line. So now this half of the three fits perfectly right there and this half will fit perfectly right there. We're gonna peel that half of the face of the jack off and we're gonna attach this piece. We need to condition the card. For this particular half and half, you only need to condition from this corner to this corner, the piece that you're coming off. So we can start conditioning that side, corner to corner. You can see only the half is coming off. You want these as flat as possible before you glue them. So you could spend the first day and do all your splitting and then the next day you do your gluing and you have all your pieces ready to go. When you apply the glue, you don't want to brush it this way. It'll get clumped up into that spot and when you go gluing this on, you'll get a little ridge that'll pop up. You can actually glue right on top of the jack a little bit and go this way. After the card is put together, you just take your finger and all that glue will just come off. Start right in the middle and start going out towards the edges. Even up close there, just don't go that way. Once you've got it fully coated, give it nice even strokes like this. It'll make it as thin as possible. And that's it, and set that aside. Same thing for this one. Start in the middle and go towards the outside and set it aside. Close your lid. Now when you're lining up a half and half card, you're not gonna go on the long edges. You're gonna go like this. Make sure they're both square, slide them together until the ends butt together. Make sure it's perfectly square. Run your finger along like that and come to the edge and flip this over. Just tap down. Now that little bit of glue that was on the jack, just take your finger like this and it'll start coming off. You have little pieces you want to contain all those pieces, so if you're gluing more cards, the last thing is you want one of these little pieces to get in between your card. It'll ruin it. Put a little bump and clean up all your edges. 
So we'll let that cure overnight. To do a half and half on an angle, I am going to use a joker and a thin face king of hearts. So we're gonna have on an angle like this, this side will be king of hearts and this will be the joker. Now when I slice through the joker, I wanna make sure I use this part of the joker because it has the word joker on it. I want that showing. And this is the piece I'm going to remove. This is just a regular joker. I've done nothing to. Remember where your joker is. Get your straight edge and go from corner to corner. And I like to come off the corner just a little bit there on the long side. And the same thing here. So it's not exactly corner to corner. Press down to hold it all in place. Double check your alignment. Remember the pressure that you have to press. Just like that. Now, you can see I haven't gone through the other side. It looks normal on this side. I only went through the face. So this piece fits there. This is the way I want it to look with the word Joker showing. For the slanted half and half, you need to condition the entire card. This is the piece that I want to remove. I'm not going to start at this corner. I'm going to start at this corner so it comes off along my slice there. You can see I've removed half of the thin face of the Joker. This King of Hearts now fits perfectly right in there. Now these two pieces are already glued and just like the other half and half card, square them up here. Slide the ends together so the two short ends butt together. Make sure it's completely square up against this. Rub your finger like that. And there it is. Come to the edge. Very gently flop that over. And press it down lightly. Now here's a queen of hearts that I was peeling the thin face off of and it ripped. It ripped as I was coming this way. Rather than aborting the card, I figured, well, I'm, I could use this for a half and half card. I just won't use this in. Just line this card up and, you know, do your slice like that or like this and just toss that piece. So this, this is still good, even though it's got a little rip on it. It happens. This is how you make the Hofsinger's card where you can shine the light through and it shows a different card and you need a thin red back. It has to be red, blue won't work. You need a black face card. Court cards will not work. And you need a red thin face. These are all thin. This is the card that you want to show at the end. This is the card you want to show through. You can match this up with a four or a seven or anything sometimes the and hide the pips between these. This is the order that you glue them in. The red face goes down and the black face goes like this. And those two get glued together. So it's kind of like a double faced card. You glue those together. Put the glue on, butt them up, flip them over, and get them so where they're glued together and perfectly aligned. Then you're going to put glue on the black face and on the opposite side of the red back. And you're going to flop that like that. Follow the same steps as the other cards. Roll it, clean all the glue off, and store them in here overnight. This is how you do the mental force. I showed in the beginning that that old dude taught me years ago at the Magic Wagon. Um, it works most of the time. Every once in a while it doesn't. You know, somebody can just pick any card they want and they didn't really see anything. But this is how you do it. It's not the back card. All you do is you split the deck in half. Let's say you want to force that queen. You just take this card and pull it back. And then this goes on top. So now you have 
this setup with a card protruding and you hide it like this. Now as you riffle through, it's going to leave a slight pause right there. I'm pretty sure you saw the queen. Now you can reveal that in several ways. You can, you can do it to where you don't even know what card you're forcing. However, after they see it, you can pick it by just cutting the deck right above that card and coming around like this. Their forced card should be right there. Now, the way you want to do this, you, you don't want to do it the first time. The first time, because you want to get people to look close. First time goes so fast that they can't see anything. And you have to remember, don't pick the front card. And this is when you explain that you've gone too fast and that you, they need to look closer. And you've forced the three of diamonds. The final trick I'm going to show you, you can perform with gaff cards that you make. This trick goes back to the 1940s. It's called Any Queen Called For. Later it was put out as Parade of the Kings. And it's funny, I was looking through my box of old magic stuff and I found this free little giveaway that I got when I ordered something, some cards one time. It's called Dream Queen. It's the same thing. So I'll show you the trick using these cards. Now they're cheap piece of crap cards. I would not recommend them for anybody, but it works fine just to go ahead and show you the routine. Now I'm not gonna do the performance. I'm just gonna show you how this thing works. You have a double back here and this is also a double back this one here is a red back queen of spades and queen of clubs this is a blue back with a queen of hearts and queen of diamonds you want to set them up in this order face these together this goes on top this goes on bottom it's pretty cool you start off with an envelope and you tell your spectator you have the four queens in here and all they have to do is name one of the queens Queen of Hearts, Queen of Diamonds, Queen of Spades, or Queen of Clubs. So let's say they name the Queen of Hearts. You take your envelope, you open it, you slide your four cards out, you fan them out, and you show them that the only card that is reversed is the card they named. And not only that, that you knew ahead of time what their card was, because it's the only one with a different colored back. Now, here's how that works. You see you got your queen of diamonds, queen of hearts. So you slide this in, and it doesn't matter which one they pick. You have it every time. You have to be in the right order. Put it in there. If they choose the queen of hearts, you slide it out like that and fan them out. It shows the queen of hearts. If they chose the queen of diamonds, you slide these out like this. Rotate it 180 degrees and then fan it. And once again, you have their queen of diamonds. You turn it over, it's the only one with a different colored back. As you turn it over, you don't flash that last pip, you pull it out just a little and you flip it. Now if they choose the Queen of Spades, turn this over, toss the cards out like this, open it up, and there's their Queen of Spades. And it's the only one that has a different colored back. If they choose the Queen of Clubs, you turn it over, slide it out, do a 180 degrees, fan them out and show there's their queen of clubs and it's the only one with a different colored back. That's called Any Queen Called For Parade of the Kings. Now it's Dream Queen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.